I'm sorry, Dave. I can't let you build that. Well, that's fine because my name's not Dave. Yes, we have a HAL 9000. 2001 and actually 2010 Mobius Models 1-1 scale plastic model kit, skill level 3, ha! That's funny as you're gonna see in a moment. Uh, but yeah, we have HAL. And it comes with lighting included for the, let's call it an eyeball. So I don't have to do any wiring, yay! And there you go, that's a little detail there and history of HAL. I laugh at the level 3 because this is like a four-part kit. <laughs> this is it. You don't even have to clip pieces off of sprues because they already did that for you. Uh, you get the main body, you get the camera lens, uh, you get the speaker, grill, and you get a stand. And that's pretty much it. And the, the clear parts and the lights and the decals. So uh, I'll discuss colors once we get into painting it, which is actually once I make sure everything's clean, that's probably going to be the next step. Uh, and I could probably assemble the whole thing for you right now. There, we're done. That's assembly. <laughs> Ta-da! Quickest build <laughs> ever. Uh, but yeah, that's all you have to do. So all the pieces that are separate get painted a different color, which makes this very, very easy to do. Uh, and like I said, you have the wiring, which is just one red LED that goes in the back. And you got the lenses. So. And you have the decals, as like I said as well, which is very simple. You have the HAL 9000 up there, and then you have the uh, lettering that goes around the camera. So all we have to do is really discuss colors, which I said we'll do in just a moment. Uh, I, as always with all kits, I go and check the original reference material to find how accurate it is, see if anything needs to be improved. And from what I can tell, this is... 98% accurate. I didn't do the actual dimensions and try to figure that out and do all the math, uh, but as far as all the details are, this is pretty good. The only thing, one fault I could find uh, on it is the thickness of the kit here. Uh, the original HAL was mounted in a wall and you had a, a bevel that went around the edge and then the rest was all hidden. And so you didn't actually see this part of the HAL. Uh, which I really wouldn't call that inaccurate. It's more uh, just an issue of uh, realisticism. You're not going to have a kit that's just a quarter of an inch deep. And also, I'm sure they made it thicker because this hooks up to a 9 volt battery, so you can hide it behind here. Uh, so, like I said, I really wouldn't call that an inaccuracy. Uh, if you're looking to do research to get it as accurate as possible, such as that is. If you go onto YouTube and search for uh, Peter Jackson and Adam Savage uh, on a tour of Peter Jackson's uh, prop collection, he actually has a HAL 9000, but what he has is a pre-production model. The ones from the movie, as far as I can tell, are lost. So uh, his is slightly different. Mainly the grill pattern is, I think, black. And I think it might be slightly different. But uh, that's about it. I don't think we're going to do any major modifications. I have one idea I may want to try, but I'm sure you budding electronic geniuses out there may want to do some other things to this thing. You could probably easily add a speaker in there somehow and play music or hook it up to your Alexa or what have you. But uh, yeah, so I'm going to do a little bit of cleanup work here and we'll get right into the painting. So I'm looking at ways to improve the kit, and I came up with one. Uh, the speaker grill. Uh, I drilled out all the holes for the speaker grill. Uh, there's two ways you can go out about doing this. If you paint it, you're going to have to uh, ink in all the holes so they end up being black. Uh, rather than doing that, uh, I just drilled them all out. <laughs> and there's about 200 on here or so. Uh, so that took a little bit of time. I just took my little pin vise and, you know, no, I didn't. Power! But I had to drill it out, and then I had to clean out the back so the leftover material wasn't sticking out. So I had to drill it twice, essentially. Clean up the uh, back with a little uh, pointed steel cutter. And not only did I do all of that work, I did it again. 
Uh, yes, I actually have two of these kits that I'm building. One for myself and one goes back to Mobius. So uh, that was one whole evening of work done. Other modifications that I did um, is the back here. There's no back on the kit, which normally would be fine, but uh, one of these I'm building to put on a wall and the other one I'm putting uh, as a display to stand up. And I don't know where that stand is right now, uh, but this is open back and you're gonna see the wiring and it's just not gonna look very attractive. So just cut some styrene and put some mounting points and put inserted magnets into them. And then on my styrene piece that I cut, we got a little bit of steel sheets. And so once we're all done, that's gonna cover the back. It's not 100% pretty, but it looks a heck of a lot better than how it looked before. And then on the other one, I put a uh, mounting spot here. Very easy, I just put a little piece of plastic. I may actually go back and put an actual uh, picture frame hanger thing on there. That's the one thing this kit is severely lacking. They should have thought about They should have put a little hook here so you could hang it on the wall. It's HAL 9000. Of course you're gonna wanna put it on the wall. So, like I said, I just put this little piece here to hang a nail off of. You can maybe do a loop or something. Um, once we get the weight in here with the 9 volt battery I was worried about, I want to be able to adjust it because of the weight might be slightly off center. So I went very simple, you can be a bit more uh, competent than me if you wish. But that is it for the modification and now we'll go into the actual painting. You know the good thing about painting two of these is I could practice on one and then try something easier on the second one, so yay. Uh, but we are starting off with the Howl's face, essentially. And it is definitely a, a blackened, uh, burnished aluminum. And if you go to that uh, Adam Savage, uh, Peter Jackson video, you can, you can tell it's very uh, reflective. You could just paint this straight black, but I wanted a little bit of metallic sheen to it to reflect the light a little bit more. And for this project, we're mainly gonna be using pretty much all Vallejo metal colors because they are very excellent metallics and I rarely get to use them. And what I did is I sprayed this on. This is, oh, by the way, this is a gunmetal gray. I could have sworn I had a black metallic, but I don't have it. Uh, so I'm kind of making do. But I've uh, added a lot of black primer to it and sprayed it on. So it's not super shiny and it's more black. So uh, that's what we currently have there. And I'm gonna let that dry and we're gonna give it a coat of a little bit of a, uh, that ink could glaze over it, I think, to darken it up a little bit more. But you can see the difference here. Because this is a little bit too gray, but I'm gonna keep doing it on the second one as well, and we're just gonna tone it down with a glaze over it. And I just gotta give it a little bit more depth and interest. So there's about three layers on this now. I end up uh, I kept going a little bit more black, and where is the black that I use? There we are. Actually, instead of primer, I switched to uh, Vallejo Model Air Black, and I still mixed in a little bit of the uh, gunmetal because of the mix. It was very difficult to get perfectly smooth because if you spray a little bit too much in one area, it's going to get more of the metallic sheen to it. But uh, we're done with that. And uh, just to give you an idea of the color, the color is a bit weird, mainly because uh, it's catching the light very well. So under the bright light, here, I'm looking through my camera here, it is, it looks more gray next to this pure black, which has a semi-gloss coat on it right now. So, uh, but if I take it away from the, maybe, hang on a second, let me see what happens if I turn off the light. See, it looks, depending on how the light hits it, it looks far darker. Still looks a little bit brighter there, but I really want it to catch the light. So you can see getting much more gray as I turn it to my overhead light there. You could just paint this black and you know be done with it. Uh, but I am not doing that. Um, so for the next coat, uh, I decided to put a matte varnish on it. Uh, what I have here 
It's a mix of matte varnish with a little bit of satin in it and also some just regular black whoop, upside down ink because I wanted to darken it still a little bit more. So we're going to do this a couple coats because I really want to seal this because this is going to be like hanging on a wall and this is a, just a big flat area that's going to you know, make it stain, maybe attract stuff. So I think a varnish is necessary. So the big secondary area to paint is the frame and that is supposed to be aluminum. Unfortunately, I don't have aluminum in metal color. So I'm kind of making do here. Uh, just mix some silver, which is what we used on the lens uh, frame, and mix that with, where are you? There you are, white aluminum. Because aluminum is just a little bit more, well, I guess white would be the best, the best uh, way to describe it. Anyway, a little bit more white than silver. So it's gonna be just very slight difference. I'm not gonna be able to tell much, but uh, need to put this on and get this mask off as soon as possible. The last thing to paint is the grill, and this is kind of the hardest, just picking color-wise. Uh, they say gun gray in the instructions. I actually thought it would be a little bit lighter. Uh, again, because of the metallic sheen and the lighting changes the movie, uh, sometimes it looks totally black. Sometimes it looks almost the same color as the frame. Uh, I have two here. I did this one down here with dark aluminum, and then this one is with gunmetal gray. And you can see this one is a little bit darker, and as I spin it, the light catches it uh, a bit more like I don't know from your angle but for me like they look almost the same here but then when I turn it this looks much darker so actually I think I will go for the gunmetal gray on both of them so once I get this painted we could get back over to the desk and start putting it all together believe it or not we're almost done here um, Got everything painted, the sides came out decent. Uh, one thing I didn't do was uh, sand this down to get a really good gloss, or excuse me, a sheen out of the metallics. You want a really super smooth surface. I didn't do that. Uh, you can if you want. It's uh, fine, you know. I'm not trying to do a super polished HAL anyway. One tiny little boo-boo right there that I have to try to fix. A little bit of the silver got underneath the mask. That's going to be hard to fix, uh, so I don't know what I'm going to do with that yet. But uh, last painting we have to do is uh, the nameplate. I decided to do that in silver and then gloss it before putting the decal down so it looks like a, a silver plate. And uh, it'll also make the decal shine a bit more. And I have to go around and paint just by hand this little strip right here where the speaker grill goes uh, because the silver it will actually show through the holes that I drilled through the plate. So we're gonna do that and um, well, I don't know what's next. We'll find out in a moment. All right, we're gonna whip this into supersonic speed and put everything together and finish this kit, these kits all up. Uh, got the grills done, ba -doom, bow, we've seen that. Uh, got the faceplate done, I fixed it. Uh, I had a little mark here and I ended up masking everything off and giving it a very light coat of black once again and it actually hid that very well. So we are done there. Um, for the wiring, where did you go, little wiring? Ah, there you are. We got the wiring here. We do have to make a modification on the wiring because, knocking things over everywhere, because I drilled out the holes in the grill plate. I don't want to put the battery here where it's supposed to go uh, because you're going to see it through possibly. So I'm making a little backing I'm gonna paint cut this to size and paint it black and put it on the back here once this goes in then that's probably not gonna leave enough room for the 9 volt battery that goes in there uh, so I'm going to extend the wires on the red one here because the, the switch has to go down over on this side the switch goes over here and I want to put the battery up here uh, so uh, it's away from the grill and has plenty of room, which for the hanging one here, that'll actually help. That'll put some of the weight more up on top. So getting a balance is gonna be an issue with this one. 
Uh, so there's that. Uh, once I get the grill painted, we will cement in the uh, ring. Here is the big problem that I ran into. You see this little thing right here that looks like it's a part of the lens? It's not. It's an injection uh, port. It's a little bit left. Uh, I, had, I did a lot of research and I finally had to call my contact at Mobius to find out what the hell this is. And yeah, this is not supposed to be here. And it's the exact same on both of the uh, lens rings. So, uh, this is, uh, this is supposed to be a final production model. Um, and really this shouldn't have been clipped off, you know, before it was actually packaged up. So I don't know if the ones that all of you will be getting will have the same thing, but uh, this is not supposed to be here. It needs to be clipped off and cleaned up. I really thought it was a part to help grab the ring or something like that. I don't know a whole bunch about camera lenses, uh, but you can see it is not really a part of the sprue. That's a solid chunk of plastic. That's the same width as the ring. So really thought it was supposed to be there. So I got to clip that off, clean it up, repaint the lens. Uh, and then we will finish up in uh, the next part, hopefully. And there we are, our finished howls. All nice and shiny and ready to kill us all. So this is with the lights on, and you're not gonna get a whole lot of glow out of this, but that is with the lights off. I really love that fisheye lens. You can see, probably see my reflection in it. But you can see reflecting a lot of the room behind me. So, yeah, it's a fairly simple build. What, what, what do we have here? Like five, six parts. Uh, of course, I like to compl uh, complicate things as much as possible. Um, I think it's a good idea, if you have the time, to uh, drill out all the speaker holes. Uh, trying to put a wash in there would have been really difficult, and this makes it look a lot more realistic. Uh, the only real silly thing that I did was doing the black here. I mean, you could just paint it black. I, that's pretty much what I ended up with. Uh, as I said, there is some sheen on the prototype that Peter Jackson has, and I was trying to recreate that. Uh, you could go with a semi-gloss, just black and a semi-gloss on it. Uh, the issue is, because is this is um, has a texture to it, I'm not sure how the gloss would work with the texture. It may actually work better, may work worse. I'm not entirely sure. But uh, the metallics came out pretty good. You can see how they're reflecting very nicely. Um, so that's about it. Um, there's a lot you can probably do with this. I'm sure a lot of people are going to pick this up and add speakers down there and what have you. Uh, just very important, yeah, clip off that little tab off the uh, edge of the camera lens. There we go, light back on. And also, let's see here, the back here. They give you double-sided tape uh, to put the batteries on, and mine lasted about a day before uh, the battery fell off. So I just added some magnets. Sorry, I'm working one-handed here, so I can't pull that off. But there's magnets on the other side of that battery. And fortunately, the 9-volt that I picked up actually sticks, so I don't have to put a metallic uh, piece of metal on the uh, battery. And the other one just has a simple black back to it. But those are our howls, and there is the base for one of them. That's currently drying, and actually I saw a little goof there. I have to put another gloss coat on it, uh, but I can't touch that at the moment. But that's going to go underneath one of our howls. So there you go, Mobius Models Howl 9000 times 2. Oh, sweet information superhighway! What gem bring you me from the far reaches of cyberspace?